Is Game Freak gonna do it? Are they just gonna go crashing into the next generation of Pokemon with the release of the new Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch? Well, I've been looking into it, I've been having to think, and it definitely seems possible as because of three things. We have the movies, we have the history, and we also have the amount of Pokemon in the 7th generation, also the 6th generation. So go break these down and see if it's enough to actually warrant just rushing into the 8th generation games. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not here to be like, yep, let's go straight to the 8th generation, because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are already saying, can't we worry about Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon first? Why are we already talking about Gen 8? Well, the thing is, the Pokemon Company, they've already brought it up. They've already confirmed that there's going to be a new Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch, and a lot of speculation is about Diamond and Pearl remakes, but there's still a big possibility that it could be Gen 8. I'm not saying that the 7th generation of Pokemon was bad and that we just need to get it over with, but all the factors are just looking pretty strange right now, and I'm just going to start off with the movie. So, the recent Pokemon movies, not all of them, I know we can go far enough back and be like, yeah, yeah, see? It wasn't always a, a mythical Pokemon that, that had to be there for the Pokemon movies, so, so that doesn't matter. But when we look at the recent ones, you know, we run out of mythicals, we bring something up from the new generation, and then we go into the next generation Pokemon, wash, rinse, and repeat. I mean, we had like Mega Evolutions in the Black and White series. With this, we had Magearna in the X and Y series, Zoroark in the Diamond and Pearl series. So, it kept like going ahead, but... This is where things get interesting, because we have Pokemon the movie, I'd Choose You, like the first mega-official non-canon movie, because it just kind of rewrites the story and retells it in a kind of fun way, but it adds a mythical Pokemon in. So it's like, oh yeah, now we have Marshadow. We're still getting our Marshadow movie, even though it just kind of feels like it's a it's a separate thing. And then we already had Magearna. That, that, that was super early when we, when we had it with all the other mythical Pokemon that need to be finished up for Pokemon X and Y. So what are, what's going to happen now? Like, oh, wait, we've already done Magearna and Marshadow, so that means we're done for movies. However, we already know that one has to come out for the summer after Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And this just makes sense. This just seems like the... It almost seems like a mythical... Ultra Beast, and even when you break down its lore and stuff, like the more you go into adhesive, the crazier it gets as a Pokemon as well. UB Adhesive displays many emotions, and it's said to be able to understand human speech if it spends enough time together with them. Now, we already know from the trailer that the Ultra Recon Squad actually has UB Adhesive in their possession, and it's going to be interesting to see how we obtain one for ourselves, but this seems like perfect mythical Pokemon movie material, you know, someone else is in possession of this thing, it seems pretty powerful, it seems pretty special, and then it can talk with the trainers, so that that's just kind of making for it, but also, of course, this is going to have to do something with the movie. Now, it is going to be interesting, because what it looks like is happening for the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is that the anime is kind of taking place with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Like, the story of the anime is kind of shifting, not for Pokemon Sun and Moon, but for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So I'm wondering if Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is going to go this, or actually, if the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is going to go this crazy, or if this is kind of going to be more like a direct movie tie-in, kind of like the first movie, where it's like, oh, we saw the build-up, you know, Mewtwo was breaking free and being trained by Team Rocket and stuff, and then we just kind of followed along into the movie. So I wonder if Pokemon Sun and Moon is going to do that. Like, what they're... Maybe their plan is to have, you know, just kind of like a, a spin-off kind of movie that's kind of fun, but then a movie that actually goes directly with the story, which we don't see too often. That'd actually be pretty fancy if they if they pulled it off, and it seems like they could do it. And then we get to explore the Ultra Megalopolis, either in anime or movie form, and then whatever story happens, happens. But what happens after that? Because if we're not going into the 8th generation of Pokemon, what could happen for the next movie? Also, if we look into the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is seeming to go at a pretty good pace. Ash has already beaten the second trial captain, and it seems like the story is now making that shift towards Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and the anime has only been out for about a year, so we give another year, that's two more trials. I don't even know if there's going to be like an Alola League or anything, you know, he went to school for this one, it definitely seems to be taking like a more chill and relaxed storyline, so I wonder if we could actually wrap this up in two, maybe even two and a half years for the anime, and then start to kick it into the next one, because I don't see a future for the movie, I don't know what's going to happen for a 2018 Pokemon movie that's still tied to the 7th generation, especially because we've already seen like we've done, like this could have been a way of kind of bridging the gap between generations, but they let off with that, so some tells me that we might just go straight into the next generation. After that, we have the history. Now, I've always said in the past, you know, just because there's some kind of repetition going on, just because you can find a pattern, doesn't mean that something's going to happen, you know? Everyone's like, oh man, we're going to get Z version. Nope, we got Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and 
Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are special because even in interviews with Junichi Masuda, with Game Freak, they've said that this is pretty much the Z version, not because of the Delta chapter or anything like that, but because these are kind of like the enhanced versions that stick to the theme of the original games, but it's also a remake. So what happened was like the timeline kind of collapsed in on itself. It's like, hey, we could do both an enhanced remake at the same time and that would work out and people would love it also you know we got black and white 2 instead of gray game free talks about how they're always trying to throw a surprise how they're you know trying to not be super predictable but at the same time by saying that you can actually be predictable and still have that be a surprise so that's where things get pretty crazy but yeah we look at this Nintendo DS into 3DS. That's where we have a new generation of games. We go into D Nintendo DS, new generation games, Game Boy Advance, new generation, Game Boy Color, new generation. And so I guess like Game Boy, Game Boy Color is kind of same. We've already seen that. You know, we've had two series on the DS. Like that's kind of another crazy thing to think about because it felt like it went so long that the fourth and fifth generations lasted so long on Nintendo DS. It's like, shouldn't it be longer for Nintendo 3DS, but it's already coming out in interviews. You know, we've had a lot of things like the recent Game Informer interview where Omori said, yeah, we, we can't push the 3DS to its limits anymore. 3DS is way too outdated. We need to start upgrading. I'm wondering if that upgrade is also going to work as a transition into a new generation because this does seem pretty crazy. Like, look, Gen, Gen 6 only had two right there, and then we also had Gen 7. That was only two, but the years are also what matters because we had a two-year break going from Pokemon Omega Green Alpha Sapphire and then going into Pokemon Sun and Moon. So it puts us in this awkward situation. Are we just going to have two years? Pokemon Sun, Pokemon Moon, um, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, then going straight into eighth generation because we know there's not a skip. It's already been confirmed and that's like what makes it so crazy. We're not guessing. We don't get to play Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, turn around in February of 2018 and be like, hey, is there a Pokemon game this year? Are we? Is this going to happen? Because that's kind of what happened with Omega Green Alpha Sapphire. Like we just didn't hear any news from Pokemon for a while. And then that means if we're not getting the 8th generation next, we get Switch game on 2018, well then, what happens if we take a year off? Does that mean 8th generation is going to be pushed back until 2020? I know some people would be happy to see that. Again, not rushing through Pokemon too often. But honestly, I don't think there'd be any quality issues. You know, there would be no quality issues with the 8th generation of Pokemon. And another thing that is interesting that kind of adds on to this is what was also said in the interview. Did I say Game Informer earlier? I meant to say IGN. But what we have right here is the director of the latest 3DS games explains that 80 people are the development team for Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. It's around half the size of Pokemon Sun and Moon staff, and that was a comparatively young team. So this is why I don't feel there'd be any quality control issues, because it's not like once Pokemon Sun and Moon finishes, that's when they start work on Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. These games are in development for years. Like, we're looking at three years, or maybe even more, that, you know, you see, you see Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a fantastic game. Mario Odyssey, it's a fantastic game. Well, the development kits for Nintendo Switch have been around years longer than the game, so it's not like they heard about the Switch announcement and they, they started to work on their games. No, all the, that information, that's been known for a while, so they were already developing those games before the Nintendo Switch was even first announced. You know, we have something crazy like that happening, and with that breakdown, I don't. that's why I don't see any quality control issues. So even if we did a new generation of Pokemon after only two sets of Pokemon games from the previous generation, it's not going to compromise quality at all. I think that that's what this interview really shows, that Game Freak is massive. I think there are over 300, 400 employees at this point. They had 160 people working on Pokemon Sun and Moon. Maybe even some of the people working for Game Freak were already working on this Nintendo Switch game instead, and then they cut that down and they had a young team. So pretty much, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is taking the newer side of Game Freak, you know, maybe trying to teach them the basics or trying to get them into a really good development vibe for Game Freak or in that rhythm right there because you have the foundation of Pokemon Sun and Moon, so you're just adding on to it, which means you can put the experience, you can put a large amount of people onto the new Pokemon game, and that could very well be a new generation, and again, we're not sacrificing quality at all. So I, I don't understand why people, you know, it's like quantity over quality. You can have both if you have, like, you, if you have enough time because this, we're talking about years, you know, if, they just keep getting on these development cycles really well. And also, if you have a lot of experience, you can you can pull off both. And I think that that is definitely possible. So I don't see that being a bad thing. Now, what about remakes? Now, unlike going from, you know, two games into a remake, two games into a remake, I just don't see that as something that Game Freak would do because remakes are supposed to be special. If we're just spitting these out left and right or just on demand, you know, oh man, we really want Omega Green Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, we got Omega Green Alpha Sapphire. Cool, let's get Diamond Pearl remakes immediately. Like, people were talking about Diamond Pearl remakes and wanting those before they even cared about, you know, what the seventh generation was going to be. 
And I don't think Game Freak would just kind of throw that in there. It'd feel like it would take away from the release of the Generation 4 remakes because there's usually a lot more time between them, not because Game Freak wants to put out the time, not because that's the trend or the pattern, but because I feel they want to really make it special. They want you to build up into this game. They want it to be so long since the last one that's like, oh my god, yes, greatest thing ever. But I feel that if we just go Omega Green Ops Sapphire, you know, pretty much Sun and Moon, Sun and Moon remake, and then Pokemon Down Pearl remakes, like, okay... It would be nice spacing, you know, it's like we did that and then we go into 8th generation, but I think that takes away from both of them. You know, why would we go hard in the Diamond Pearl remakes if a lot of our work is going to kind of be undone with whatever new features are introduced in the 8th generation? And if we go 8th generation Diamond Pearl remakes, then again, like, who cared about the 8th generation? Because, oh my god, our Diamond Pearl remakes. So even though it's on the Nintendo Switch, and it could really do some crazy, like, like could you imagine Nintendo Switch... Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but 8th, like, 4th generation remake, but Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, but 4th gen, but better. Like, that, I'm really excited for, you know, Diamond Pearl remakes 2019, 2020, and I'm not saying, like, oh, they do it every 5 years, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say it like that, but what I'm saying is, I think they try to make it a bit more special, and that they, they put in a lot of other generations, you know, we had two generations in between this one, we had one and a half generations in between that, and then, yeah, now we're starting to, like, kind of loop back around and stuff. So I think Diamond Pearl is definitely possible, but I'm looking at this, yeah, we have new console into a new generation every time, so I don't even know what else they could add, you know? Diamond Pearl Remake seems out of the question, and if it's not gonna be the 8th generation, what is it? Now, I'm not saying that Game Freak can't do some kind of, like, crazy project where it's like, oh, by the way, instead of a 4th generation remake, we just do four, the first four regions or something, we have, like, a massive multi-region game. I could see that being possible in 7th generation for the new console, just like really, really going crazy on the introduction of the Switch. But I still think that there, there is some possibility with the 8th generation just going off of the title history because, yeah, they don't have to, you know, kind of going with trends and not going with trends at the same time. You know, nothing's stopping Game Freak from making a quality 8th generation game just after we go Pokemon Sun and Moon, mostly because 3DS is kind of played out. And maybe that's why Pokemon Sun and Moon was so small. Maybe that's why there wasn't that much of a post game. Maybe that's why there wasn't uh, as large of a Pokedex. And that's where we get into the next thing. Pokemon Sun and Moon Pokedex, pretty small. Like, for the most part, when we break down the 6th generation, 6th generation, they added two batches of Mega Evolutions. And those could technically count as, like, new Pokemon to the deck. So, you know, a new style of Pokemon. That, that that makes it feel like there's more than just, like, a couple of Pokemon introduced. Unfortunately, there weren't any as many Alolan Pokemon as there were Megas introduced in the 6th generation. So, it didn't really feel like there was a lot. Now, unless we get a ton of Alolan Pokemon, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, yeah, the Pokedex is going to feel small. And I'm not going to say empty or incomplete. But I think that for the last two generations of game, you know, 6th and 7th generation had the two smallest Pokedexes that we've seen so far, so maybe that's also a bit. That's not just 7th generation to 8th generation, but it's kind of like, we didn't have a lot of new Pokemon 6, didn't have a lot of new Pokemon 7. You know, I'm not against Pokemon Sun and Moon at all, I enjoyed it, but when you look at kind of like the decisions, the creative decisions around it, it was a more basic game. It was a more simple game. Maybe that was just because trying to keep 6th and 7th generation a bit more simple, and then we can go crazy for the 8th generation, you know? It doesn't feel like we're rushing if we still want to see new Pokemon from the combined Pokedex, if we want to see those new features kind of tagged in. And it looks like, you know, they've done a lot to just make Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and a ridiculously enhanced version, but if they wrap up that story all nice, and then they give us something for an 8th generation game, I think that's definitely possible, so that's what I mean. We look at the movies, where can they go? We look at the future games, where can they go? We look at the Pokedex, yeah, it's been kind of small for the last couple of generations, and maybe they could definitely bring something massive to it, and then just kind of fill it out like that. After that, hopefully the 8th, and also with an 8th generation game, what they can do is they can make 8th gen so large that it does last for two years, that it does have an absurd amount of longevity. Maybe even patches? I'm, I, one can dream. I always hope. I want Game Freak to regularly update their game that isn't just bug fixes and glitches, you know? I don't want that. But what I really want to see is that, you know, if we if we have Pokemon 2018 for two years, that gives Game Freak time to rest. I think it balances out some of these other gaps that we've seen. You know, it makes it feel more traditional. It makes it feel like we're not just rushing through Pokemon experiences. And then, boom, 2020, Diamond Pearl remakes. I'm in a job for, what is that, four years now? Because then we get a year off of that game. And then Game Freak's free to do whatever they want. I feel like they do have two things on the table. I feel with this momentum, eight generations possible, Diamond Pearl remakes, I really want underground bases, and I feel that those games could be done to an absolutely incredible extent, but I don't know what they're going to do after that. I, I feel like doing an enhanced version of whatever eight gen is going to be, maybe not. 
I do just want to see a multi-region game, a more open world experience. I really, I really want Pokemon to start getting more free out of that. I feel like, you know, they can clean, they can, they can clean their plate, get everything off the table, and then 21, or 2021, 2022, they they can do whatever. I don't, that, that's when they can break the mold. They can have their, a, a completely new experience that shatters everything about Pokemon. And I think that that'd be better because they could do that for 2018. They could do that for the game next year. But I think that'd be too, too much. You know, new console and then an entirely new Pokemon experience. I think 8th gen remakes and then going crazy. You know, that's when you can take your risks, you know. I think after the 4th generation remakes, uh, Game Freak will have more money than God. So that, that could give them some opportunity. So I'm just thinking about this. And it could be very possible that we just have eight generation on Nintendo Switch, because it actually works. If you if you put away any bias, if you put away just any weird feelings about rushing, it makes sense, and it'd be pretty cool to see. So, if you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.